What is your reaction to the ruling from the high court? Well, it was an extraordinary ruling in that it set forth a new proposition of law that had never before uh, been stated in any opinion from the Supreme Court, namely that a president is entitled to immunity from prosecution uh, for acts committed while in office. Um, that is an entirely new statement from the Supreme Court. That said, the ultimate impact on the prosecution of Donald Trump in the special counsel's case brought in D.C. may not be all that much if the case is able to go forward on either the unofficial acts and or those official acts as to which Jack Smith can overcome the presumption of immunity that the court articulated here for official acts. There's going to be a huge impact on the timing of that case, though, because now the case goes back to the trial court to determine which acts are official and are not official. And for official acts, whether the presumption of immunity can be overcome and then Trump would be able to appeal an adverse decision against him to the D.C. Circuit and then possibly back up to the Supreme Court. So in terms of timing, things just got pushed back even further mm -hmm. in terms of this case ever going to trial. On the substance, on the merits, the ultimate impact may not be that grave. Jessica, we heard uh, from the spokesman uh, for the White House Counsel's Office, Ian Sam's issued a very brief statement after the ruling, quote, as President Biden has said, nobody is above the law. But in fact, we learned otherwise today, didn't we? I realize this could take on some different contours in the lower court. and It's going to come back to the Supreme Court. But as of right now, if it's considered an official act, Joe Biden can do anything he wants. Well, the Supreme Court majority opinion says that even for official acts, it's only, at least as of now, presumptively immune, that that presumption could be overcome if a prosecutor could show um, that it would not um, intrude on the proper functioning of the executive branch to bring a prosecution um, for that allegedly criminal conduct. Although it, the court does take pains to say that, at least for now, it's a minimum of presumptive immunity. It leaves open the door for the idea that that actually could be absolute immunity. Um, so the court really sort of didn't commit to a position on that. But the majority opinion also said uh, no person is above the law and a president would not be above the law because they could be prosecuted for unofficial acts and it left open the possibility of prosecution even for official acts where that presumption would be overcome. But certainly this opinion um, seems to uh, make a president considerably more immune from prosecution than before this decision was handed down. So, Jessica, in, in your personal reading of this, knowing that someone who could be president again in Donald Trump has talked about retribution if he gets back into the Oval Office, being a dictator on day one, that a question that came up in these arguments was whether or not a president could direct, say, SEAL Team 6 as the commander-in-chief to assassinate a political rival. Should we be concerned about the potential decisions that a second Donald Trump would be able to make as president under this ruling? Yes, I think we should be very concerned about that. And the dissent uh, highlighted that uh, uh, very colorfully um, and pointed out that on the dissent's reading of the majority opinion, a president would be immune from prosecution for undertaking such act. The majority opinion did not take a position explicitly on that hypothetical and really sort of took pains to say that the dissent was engaging essentially in fear mongering and considering hypotheticals that were not presented and as to which the court had not ruled and that those issues, if they ever were to arise, would be left for another day. Uh, so on the one hand, the majority's language and its opinion seems quite sweeping. It's hard to imagine how under that broad language um, that hypothetical uh, would not be covered by the immunity that the court articulated. But at the same time, the court then goes on to say, actually, we're, our holding today is quite modest. We're holding that um, a president enjoys immunity um, for certain core acts within uh, the, our, the powers entrusted to him by the Constitution. Here, that means communications with members of the Department of Justice about acts that they should undertake. And we really don't reach anything else um, in this opinion.
And so it does need to be left for another day. Sort of how that hypothetical would be resolved, would it deem to be within the core functions of the president as entrusted to him but to, by the Constitution, uh, for example, as commander in chief? Would it be deemed to be outside of those core functions, but nevertheless an official act? Uh, would it be an official act as to which there would be a presumption of immunity, but that presumption could be overcome? Um, or would it deem, be deemed to be unofficial? So these are questions to be resolved if they ever arise on another day. So we've established, uh, Jessica, that Jack Smith is essentially out of time here when it comes to the January 6th trial as we knew it. Is there another approach for him? Is there another way for him to write charges that gets around this ruling today? There's a lot of the conduct that's alleged in his January 6th indictment that I think is either clearly unofficial and which Trump's lawyers conceded was unofficial at the oral argument before the Supreme Court, namely Trump's communications with private attorneys um, in connection with an effort to create false slates of electors, for example. That would be clearly unofficial, and Trump, Jack Smith could proceed on the basis of those allegations. And then there's a huge uh, range of conduct um, that would be deemed to be possibly official, and the court parties would have to litigate whether that was official or not, namely Trump's communication with state officials. Um, the question for Smith is how much does he want to pursue those acts that are possibly going to be deemed to be official? Um, does he want to pursue that in the trial court? Does he want to also pursue that even if they are official, that he can overcome the presumption that they're entitled to immunity? Does he want to litigate that all the way up the courts um, before ever getting to a trial? Or does he want to just slim down to things that are pretty unequivocally private acts, does he yeah. think he can win his case, at least as to some of the charges, based solely on private acts? Those are the choices he's going to be thinking about now.